It's that time of year again. We are officially in fall. For most artists, this means we must prepare ourselves for Inktober. Inktober is a practical exercise challenge to develop one's art skills consistently over the course of 31 days, the full month of October. In this video, I'm going to discuss the purpose of Inktober and provide you with some valuable tips for completing this challenge. The challenge is the following. Draw one piece every day for 31 days according to the daily Inktober prompt for that year. More importantly, each piece needs to be drawn in ink or black and white. The hard part. Number one is time management. If you've never done this challenge before, you might think, huh, Drawing something once a day, every day, seems pretty easy. Well, it can get very difficult very quickly. If you have a full-time job or you're a full-time student, you need to set aside time apart from your busy schedule to draw something of substance, which can often take a few hours. It's a challenge for a reason. Number two, creativity. Some of these prompts are straightforward, but some can get pretty tricky. You have to actively use your brain to design and execute something to fit a specific prompt that might not be as interesting. For example, if I instructed you to create a piece focusing on a vampire, that's pretty straightforward. We're all familiar with vampires. You can come up with a number of interesting scenarios for a vampire that could be exciting, blood curdling, no pun intended, easy breezy. But if I instruct you to draw, mm, I don't know, a flower, you probably won't find this as exciting a prompt. This is when the pressure comes in for some people. Suddenly, you realize the onus is on you to use your imagination and create something worth looking at. Number three, skill. The technical aspect of this challenge is focused on drawing with ink in black and white or grayscale. No color whatsoever, hence Inktober. If you rely on color to make your pieces pop, then this challenge will push you to practice A, how to shade using grayscale, B, how to render detailed pieces with high contrast, and C, more importantly, how to master your line work. Because trust me, when you're only drawing in black and white, if your line work is sloppy, your audience will notice. I've heard tattoo artists describe this best. To design a striking piece, you must ensure the images are legible or clearly defined. To sum it up, you have to leave your comfort zone. Practice outside of your strengths or usual style. Work on your weaknesses. Whether it's the technical aspects of drawing in black and white, shading techniques, or even if you're always used to drawing cutesy girly figures, try drawing something ugly and scary for once. Draw something different. Embrace the spirit of the holiday. Now that is why I'm gonna recommend a few ways of actually going about this art challenge. You can go the strict route, draw one piece every day for 31 days, or you can try the following. The way I see it, you can either focus on the quality or the quantity of your drawings. Quantity. Drawing daily doesn't necessarily mean drawing a masterpiece daily. Your Inktober could just be sketches meeting the prompt at the most basic level. That's why a lot of artists purchase a small or travel sized sketchbook dedicated to the challenge. This method lends itself to the simplicity of the daily art prompt. You can easily set aside just an hour or two to practice your daily black and white ink drawing. Quality. Pushing yourself to go above and beyond just meeting the prompt. Instead of a sketchbook, you can properly set up a separate page as canvas to create a masterpiece full of detail, depth, lighting, contrast, and texture, all in ink. A finished piece with your signature and everything. This means you're definitely gonna take more than just one or two hours a day. Choosing between these two approaches depends entirely on what you want to get out of the challenge. I mean, seriously, ask yourself, do I want to push myself to learn A, new techniques, B, produce finished pieces, or C, just design ink sketches for the purpose of the daily exercise. Personally, I do a bit of both. If I'm serious about completing the daily quota, sometimes I'll just make a quick sketch that fits the prompt, then I'll ink it in. But if I'm really feeling the prompt and I feel excited and inspired, I'll go all out 
I might even transfer it to my iPad and add color digitally if I'm especially proud enough, you know, to finish the piece. Hell, you don't even have to complete Inktober as a daily challenge. Let's talk about a few options that can make your artistic lives a little easier. First is the daily method everyone knows, 31 days, 31 pieces. Second, if this is too overwhelming, you can just draw every other day for a total of 18 pieces in October. And if even that's too demanding, draw something once a week for a total of five pieces dedicated to the month, making sure to complete a piece on Halloween day. And finally, if you don't want the pressure of a quota to meet during the month, I've recently seen a lot more artists choosing to draw according to the theme of October. As opposed to trying to meet a daily or weekly prompt, some artists will just create original characters or sketches like they normally would, but showcasing the Halloween spirit. Remember, this ain't homework. It's not a graded assignment. Please don't let the challenge or daily deadlines start ruining your fun because that's what this challenge is supposed to be, fun. Now I'm gonna talk about my favorite holiday and why I think you should try this challenge. Ideally, artists wanna draw every day regardless, but there's something special about this season. There's something special about October. I think it's all thanks to that special spooky holiday that inspires creativity in so many artists that embark on this Inktober challenge. Halloween, baby. I love Halloween. <laughs> As an artist, I feel the most inspired by all things dark, spooky, and macabre. During this season, we can really let our imaginations run wild, dreaming up horrifying creatures and images. For me, committing these fears and scary monsters to paper are tangible ways to control those fears. The irrational dreams in my skull become rational once my hands can transfer them to paper. Drawing isn't the only medium in which we do this. Writing poetry, singing sad songs, producing fantastic movies all serve the same purpose. The ideas of witches, ghouls, ghosts, legends, cultural and pagan traditions there is so much history that is derived from one holiday and there are so many universal truths across different cultures, like speaking to the dead, a day in which the dead can talk to us and walk among us, meeting our families, deceased loved ones and ancestors. In my opinion, there's nothing more human than the enchanting and mysterious ghost stories we tell each other every year. Communities gather around to share, listen and watch fantastic horror movies that play out very real human fears. It's our way as a society to process these fears in a safe and digestible way. Playing, dress up, eating candy, indulging in adult fantasies are all ways in which we process and can escape the very real dangers we face in the real world. That's why Halloween is so special. That's why today's prompt, dream, is very fitting for such a holiday. As humans, we dream of fairies and monsters. And as artists, we bring these spirits to life. But at the end of the day, our challenges are meant to get your ass in the seat and just draw. Anything that will challenge you to create something for the sake of creativity is worthwhile. Remember, this process is about you and granting yourself dedicated time to cultivate your imagination. That being said, I hope you do something fun and creative this week for yourself. Here is my drawing for day one of Inktober 2023. I hope you look forward to more Inktober videos from my channel and subscribe for more.